All right, so in this video, we are going to be taking a look at the recently added surround delay plugin from within Studio One version 6.5. Let's get started. Have a pretty simple session open up over here. And if we take a look at this track, I have a very basic groove. Let's play it just from here so you can hear it without any effects. We do have a little bit of reverb that was added. This was actually rendered or printed into the stem, but it's just a very basic groove track that we have that plays right across this whole entire track. Now what I've done is I've added an instance of surround delay. I've just dragged and dropped this directly onto the send. And then on the return channel over here, you can see that the output routing for the speaker setup, this is set up for 7.1.2. And the reason I'm doing that is a couple of reasons. First of all, this is being sent to the actual bed track, which is a 7.1.2 format. The speaker configuration, this doesn't matter in this case. If we take a look at my outputs, I have this set up with basically just a phantom set of outputs. It's not routed to any actual speakers, but I just have it set up this way. But what we are actually monitoring is we are monitoring via headphones and we are listening to the binaural mix. And this is what I'm actually recording and this is what will be uh, embedded into this video as I publish it. So definitely you're going to want to make sure you're listening to headphones for the duration of this video in order for this to make any sense. So if I solo the surround delay return and let's open up all three of these plugins. Well, not really plugins. We have the Dolby Atmos renderer open. We have the surround delay and then we have a mix tool. Notice this is how mix tool looks when we're dealing with a 7.1.2 output. We have our left, our right, our center, our LFE, our left surround, our right surround, our left rear surround, our right rear surround, which would be these two over here. And then we have our left top mid and our right top mid. This is because we don't have a set of left and right front ceiling speakers and left and right rear ceiling speakers. It's just kind of split up in between the middle of these. So now that we understand that routing, let's take a listen to this. I'm going to go to the init patch just so we can kind of demonstrate this. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the snap option, directional snapping. This will really help us in terms of kind of honing in on exactly what's happening here. So if I have snapping enabled, notice that when I drag this over, you see this little dot? This is basically just going to snap this panning position. So now if I press play, keep in mind, we are soloing the effects return, but we're not listening to the dry signal. Take a listen to what happens when I press play now. Okay, we hear we have a delay, we have some feedback. We can decrease this feedback or we can increase it, doesn't really matter. But take a look at what we're looking at here in the Dolby Atmos renderer. We have one channel that's coming in. This is the center channel because this surround delay, this one tap over here is actually panned to the center channel and we've snapped that. So notice in our bed track over here, we have this. Now, if I was to mute this center track, notice that we have nothing. Okay, so let's press stop for a moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to engage another delay. We will activate this. And this one, let's snap this over to a different set of speakers. Let's snap this over to here. And now if we listen to both of these together, now notice that we have a delay coming out of the left and we also have a delay coming out of the center. Let's mute the center one for a moment. Whoops, right over here. And now we're just listening to one on the left. Okay, now while this is playing, I'm going to bring in a third delay. Let's enable this third delay. And I'm gonna actually snap this, click, hold and drag. I'm gonna snap it to the right side. Okay, now let's mute the left and right and let's just listen to the center. So we have the first delay, delay one is hard panned to the center speaker. Delay two is hard panned to the left and delay three is hard panned to the right. Okay, I'm gonna push stop for a moment. So basically the way that this works is that it allows you to pan your delays coming out of a very specific speaker. And in this case, we're listening to a 7.1.2 configuration. Now, what I'm gonna do is let's actually mute all three of these. So if I was to press play now, even the, though these are active, notice we don't have anything coming into the beds because I'm just essentially muting them with a mix tool right over here. We can see this right here. This mix tool is just simply muting these channels, okay. So let's bring these back open again and actually let me select, the, let me make sure that I select the proper track so that we have that in focus. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in delay number four. So this one right over here, let's activate this. But this time, instead of hard snapping it to a very specific output, like directional snapping, notice over here we have use shift to bypass. I'm going to click this and drag it, but I'm gonna use shift and this will now disperse this delay based on where I'm dragging this. This will now disperse this in a slightly different spot. So now check this out for a moment. Let's actually deactivate all three of these. And now with delay four that we've, let's actually turn snapping off. With delay four, watch what happens here in terms of when I press play, you'll be able to see that this is being spread across in terms of the beds, you'll see this come in. There we go. Notice as I move this around, that it's being spread across these different outputs. And if I have it kind of splitting a difference in between something, or if I have this over here, that this panning is being done and this is being spread across. Okay, let me stop this for a moment. So I hope that this kind of helps show exactly what's happening here. We have a number of different delays that we can adjust. In this case, we have eight different delays that we can adjust. And then we can choose exactly where each one of these delays, where their output is coming in terms of this speaker placement that we have over here. And then of course we can adjust things like level, direction, elevation, uh, the position, the feedback, everything that, that, that we're used to. Now it's kind of hard to get an honest picture of this when you're listening to a binaural fold down of this immersive output. But unfortunately this is the only way that I can kind of explain this. Really quickly though, I want to talk about how this differs from something like, for example, Groove Delay. So let me slide over to, where is Groove Delay? Groove Delay, right over here. When I very first saw this plugin, for a quick moment, I actually thought that this was, they, they had redone or updated Groove Delay, but that's not the case. The Surround Delay plugin is entirely its own plugin and it was designed and meant for use with Immersive. But for a moment, let's take a look at Groove Delay. And what I'll do is let's reset the panning on this percussion track. And what I'm gonna do is just drag Groove Delay in the sends for this percussion track. And now if you take a look at Groove Delay, Groove Delay has always given us uh, four different taps that we can adjust, which is kind of why I confused this initially. But the thing to keep in mind with Groove Delay versus Surround Delay, is that these four taps, they are all coming out of a stereo output, right? So if we play this, even though the output of this right over here, this track, this groove delay track, let's move it to the side of here. Even though this output is set up as a 7.1.2 out, if I press play and let's solo this groove delay track out, notice that we're, we are only going to see meters for the left and right. Kind of hard to see them here. If I was to open this, you can see that our left and right meters are moving because that's all that we're being sent. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Like I said, we do have the ability to adjust how many taps and we could adjust anything. We could go, let's just try this one over here. Okay, I don't know if there's anything that has more activated. Okay, so we have lots of different things happening with the tap over here, but at the end of the day, this is only a stereo output. Even though the output of this bus channel is set to 7.1.2, the Groove Delay plugin itself is basically just outputting. But that's the main thing I wanna kinda of try to differentiate here, is that the Groove Delay plugin is multiple taps, but they're all routed to just a stereo source. And the Surround Delay plugin, this is a completely different beast. And in this case, we can have a lot of control in terms of tailoring our delays, how they interact with each other, and which speakers they are coming out in immersive environment. Like I say, super hard to get a full complexity of that when we're listening over binaural, over headphones, over a YouTube video. But if you were in the middle of an Atmos or an immersive setup and you were listening to these delays that were coming out of very specific speakers, or in the case of this fourth delay over here, where we are adjusting this so that it's coming out of multiple speakers and we're hearing that together, then you'd definitely be able to hear that instantly. Now there are a bunch of different presets that you can adjust over here. And in this case, like you can see in this particular situation, we have one, two, and then we have three, four, five. We have 
five delays that are active and they all have very discrete routing. So if I was to play this, let's make sure that just the return is soloed for a moment. Let's take groove delay out of the equation momentarily. Uh, and let's, let's solo the surround delay plugin again. And we'll listen to that, bring open everything. And the other thing I need to do is make sure that the send is active. Let's listen. So you can see here now, we have five level returns that are coming in on the bed tracks because we have one, two, three, four, five. And each one of these delays is coming out of a very specific speaker in terms of their panning. So if I wanted to mute any of these, if I wanted to mute the left and right, I could mute the left and right. If I wanted to mute the center, I could mute the center. And then I can see over here that the left rear surround and the right rear surround, which are right over here, if I wanted to mute these two, that I could mute these as well. So once you understand how the surround plugin works or how the surround delay plugin works, I think it helps you get a better sense and understanding of how you might end up using it. Now, at the end of the day, your brain's ability to listen to a binaural mix and to be able to mix on a set of headphones and to be able to localize where sounds are coming from and how you want this to work in with the full mix. This is going to have a lot to do with things because we're just listening to a binaural headphone rendering of the immersive mix at the end of the day. But this definitely looks like a cool plugin. And as soon as I have my immersive speaker setup going, I definitely want to give this a listen to and perhaps do another video on it. But regardless, I just wanted to take a moment to go over this plugin, talk about how it differs from something like the Groove Delay plugin, and hopefully an introduction to snapping, the snap mode that we have available in addition to the mix tool for working with immersive outputs such as 7.1.2. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Catch you for more in the next one. Cheers.